Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Keith the Guy and we got some fish to fry and today is another episode where we're going to be color grading on our iPad. Now, I was just fooling around with my camera, which is the Canon R5, and I decided, hey, why not go ahead and color grade this on my iPad while I'm chilling at the beach in Cabo? Well, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm actually in my room. But how cool is that, that you can um, color grade on your iPad on the go without having to carry a big laptop or carrying your desktop. You would be strange if you did, but you know, to each their own. And I'm gonna go ahead and hop right in here. So as I mentioned before, I am shooting this on my Canon R5 and I'm using Cinema Gamma and C-Log3 to shoot this. So enough rambling on, let's go ahead and get started. But real quick, if you wanna learn how to insert a clip into DaVinci Resolve, it's pretty simple. I'm using an external drive, specifically an SSD. You're gonna go into the first tab and then you're gonna hard press here. And then you're gonna press import media. And then that's where you're gonna be able to import all your media and do editing. This is the free version, by the way. That's why I have a limited number of tabs. I'm not too sure if you could edit on the free version. If you can, go ahead, leave a comment down below because I'm not too 100% sure. So hopefully that information was factual and let's go ahead and move on to this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change up some settings. So we're gonna go into our waveform and then you're gonna see it starts from zero to 1023. This is a 10 bit type of footage. So we're gonna go ahead and press these three dots right here. And then we're gonna change the waveform scale to 10 bit. And if it was at 12, you would be at 495, but we're using 10 bit. So we're sticking to the 1023. And then the next thing we're gonna do is change our color management. So we're gonna go into settings, which is this cog wheel down below. And we're gonna go to color management. We're gonna choose DaVinci YRGB and our timeline color space is gonna be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So now that we got that down packed, we're gonna change this log footage over to a Rec. 709 color space. The best way to do that is create this node right here. And if you don't know how to do that, you're gonna press this button right next to the hand and it's gonna create another node. So we're gonna to go to the first node and we're gonna to go to effects and then we're gonna type in color and then you're gonna see color space transform and we're gonna drag that on the first node. We're gonna turn off effects. We're gonna create a greater real estate. That way we can see our footage a little bit better and we're gonna tap on the effects again and we're gonna change the parameters as such. As I mentioned before, I'm using the Canon R5 in Cinema Gamut C-Log3. So we're gonna adjust our color space and our gammas as such. So we're gonna change use timeline to Canon Cinema Gamut. And then we're gonna go to C-Log3, Canon Log3. And changing the output color space and the output gamma is not really gonna do anything because we adjusted that in our color management when we went into settings, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyways. So we're going to go ahead and pick Rec. 709, and then we're gonna use Gamma 2.4, and then we're gonna go ahead and press that effects tab again so we can get rid of it, and then we're gonna move on. Now the end goal for this particular clip for me is to go ahead and post it on Instagram and TikTok just to show off my gear, and I kinda already know where I kinda want the white balance and the tint to be. So in order to go ahead and go to that, we're gonna press this second wheel over here to get to the primaries, and then we're gonna move over here to where it says the color wheels. So. If you guys don't see what I just did, I went from the bars to the wheels, and then we're gonna look at temperature and tint. We're gonna keep it real simple today. Now there's a bunch of ways to adjust your white balance, but in this case, we're gonna make it super simple and super quick, and we're gonna change the waveform to parades. Well, not parades, vector scope, and we're going to adjust our temperature. I already know I wanna make this very cool in comparison, so. 460 is going to be my sweet spot. And then my tent is going to be 4. And I'm going to make this much, much bigger so I could see what's going on. Now, if you're someone who's used to using the desktop version of DaVinci Resolve, usually our disable enable nodes will be up on top but you actually have to hard press your node and press disable node to see where you started and then re-enable it 
to see where you left off. So we're going to enable that. I'm liking the way it looks right now. So we're going to go ahead and create another node by tapping this button right next to the hand tool. And then we're going to move on to our exposure. Now, in order for me to see my exposure properly, I got to change this to waveform. And as I mentioned before, we got to change it to a 10 bit range because this is not a 12 bit footage. I'm going to keep it very simple and I'm only going to be utilizing the lift gamma and gain. Now there's many ways to go about adjusting your exposure. For example, you can go into HDR rules and get a little bit more intricate with your exposures, or you can adjust it in your curves as well, which we're going to be dabbling with later on. But for now, I'm just going to adjust my exposure using my primaries. So I'm going to really brighten up this image by adjusting the offset, which adjusts the overall image. And I'm going to bring it up to, we're going to bring it to 30. We're going to put it at an even number. Bada bing, bada boom, with bam, 29.95, same difference. But I am going to adjust the gain to get that shine off a little bit on my camera. It looks nice, but it's a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to adjust my gain. I'm going to bring it down to like about, hmm, I think 92 is the sweet spot. You still got a little bit of that glow without it overpowering the eyes. Let me, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger if I can. Uh, I guess that's the biggest it gets. And then we're going to go ahead, go over to our gammas, which is the in-between of our darks and our brights. And I'm going to adjust it as such. I'm actually going to bring it up to compensate some of that loss we got off of removing the gain. So 0.5 is good as well, too. It's looking a little washed out, but we're going to fix that in our curves. So the next thing we're going to do is adjust our lifts, probably bring it down. So it's just touching the zero slightly on the waveform. And then we're going to go ahead and move on, which is the next thing, our contrast. So we're going to create another node. I'm going to drag it down here so we can have a little bit more space. Now you could utilize the custom curves and create an S curve if you wanted to, but I want to go ahead and still use my primaries. So what I like to do is adjust the pivot to 0.6. And what the pivot kind of does is it kind of tells you where the points would be if you were in an S curve and how wide or narrow that curve would be. And let me go ahead and dial all the way forward. This is something I kind of learned from my mentors and dial back until it starts looking sweet and juicy. So we're going to dial back, dial back. And we're getting there. We're almost there. Hang along with me. And 0.5 is looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and hard press that node. Disable it. Enable it. Okay. It's a slight touch. And then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and move forward to saturation. Now I'm going to show you something pretty cool when it comes down to creating saturations. And I'm not going to lie. There's so many ways to use saturation and DaVinci Resolve. I freaking love it. But here's a lesson that I've actually learned from Mr. Colin Kelly himself. And we're going to go ahead, create a new node and we're going to hard press this node again. But instead of enabling and disabling it, we're going to actually utilize our color space and our channels to specifically pinpoint our saturations. So we're going to go to color space and we're going to go ahead and go all the way down to HSV, which stands for hue, saturation and value. Now, the next thing you're going to do is hard press again and go to channels. Now, as I mentioned, HSV stands for hue, saturation and value. We don't care for the hues. We don't care for the value. We're going to only focus on our saturation. So we're going to turn off channel one to turn off our hues. And then we're going to go back to channels and we're going to turn off channel three so we can turn off our value or whatever the V stands for. I do believe it's value. And now whatever you do on this node is only going to impact the saturation of the video. And I already know I want to implement some saturations in my gain and my gamma. So we're going to be utilizing the primary wheels once more. I know you guys are getting tired of the primaries, but to be honest with you, if you could keep your color grades simple and unnoticeable, 
then you, my friend, are a true editor. So we're gonna go ahead and implement some saturation in our game. And we're going to tweak it as such. I'm liking it at 1.2. And then we're going to definitely put it in our gammas. And I'm the type of person who likes to keep my blacks black. So we're not gonna add no saturation to our glyphs. And I'm going to drag it to four. I'm really liking it. It's adding more juice. It's making it more crunchy. And um, let's turn it on and off to see where we began. So we're gonna disable the node. Then we're going to enable the node and it added more punch to it. So we're gonna go ahead and create another node. Hang with me guys, we're almost done. And this is where we're gonna be utilizing our custom curves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay attention to the colors in this specific frame. Now I know there's blues, there's magentas, and then there's my skin, which is gonna fall into the reds. And I know I wanna adjust the hues of that along with the saturations, the intensity of the saturations, along with how bright or dark those saturations are going to be. So first we're gonna go into hue versus hues. And if you can see at your bottom left hand corner of your screen, you have the color red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. So we're gonna tap these buttons. And of course there's gonna be some buttons we're not gonna tap because those colors ain't important. And my iPad just mentioned to me that there's a football game about to go on. So we're gonna go to hue versus saturation. And then we're going to adjust the blues. And I'm gonna just be using these bottom parameters here instead of the curve itself, because I feel like it's a little bit more precise to utilize that. We're actually gonna add some saturation to our blues. So we're gonna tap on saturation and we're going to drag it. And mm, we're gonna make those blues pop at point 1.3 and then we're gonna go in our reds for my skin and we're going to make that pop as well at 0.9 and then we're going to attack our magentas and really dial in some of that to like 1.34 right and I, I'm gonna be doing all of this in this particular node so I'm gonna move on to my hue versus luminance and I'm gonna go ahead go to my blues and I'm actually going to darken my blues. So 1.74, I'm liking that. Well, it's not 1.74, well, I'm gonna shut up. And then I'm gonna brighten my skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the reds and I'm gonna put it at approximately right there. And then I'm gonna go to my luminance versus saturation. And then I'm going to remove some saturations in my blacks and my whites, cause I kinda like them pure. And then the next thing I like to do is create a vignette. So my way of using a vignette is actually using our power windows. So I'm gonna go ahead, create a circle and kind of feather it out. Put our attention on my hand along with the camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead, go here to my primaries again. And I'm actually going to dial down the gain, right? And I'm gonna go back to my power window and actually inverse it by tapping that button underneath the delete and then going back and then dialing back my gain some more so we can keep our attention on that. And I'm gonna create a new node. And that's basically it. You guys tell me what you think about my grade. Now, I mentioned before, in order to turn off a node and turn on a node, you have to hard press it. But what if you wanna turn on and off the overall image? That way you could see your before and after. Now you see where it says PXY and then the sound in between. You see this little color thing with those magical thingamajiggers going on, just tap that. And then you're gonna turn it off. And then this is how it looked when it entered into our project, just a simple log image. 
and this is our after you guys tell me did i do a good job or you guys not really feeling it either way go ahead leave a comment down below and if you liked it go ahead you already know smash that like button and if you ain't part of the crew why not go ahead and subscribe i'm gonna make a lot more videos like this in the future and you guys have to stay tuned because i really enjoyed this and i see that you guys enjoyed this as well now what some people also like to do is kind of sharpen their image too i'm not the biggest fan of that but if you wanted to you're going to go into your blur and then you're going to bring the radius actually down to sharpen it i never like going past 0.47 because it kind of makes it look a little too digital but if that's what you guys wanted to do go ahead that's how you get the sharpening and that's it we just fry some fish my real name's kit it be that's it deuces